I am Cleveland Smith, and I am a sixth grade English teacher at Altona Middle School. <laughs> and um, I believe that classroom community is the most important topic in education, and I've been using podcasting in my classroom to do that. Um, and that was the slide where I was going to say all of that. <laughs> Um, but you can actually scan a QR code up there in the top left corner where I show you all the nuts and bolts of this. But I want to go into the why and what first. But first, I'll start with a story that uh, my first year teaching, I was absolutely terrified of parent-teacher conferences. I mean, look at those people. <laughs> That's ter My job was to present all this data that I didn't really understand to these parents so that they understood what I didn't somehow understand. But then I had a meeting with my mentor, Karen Yegi, where she told me that's not what's important. What's really important is that you communicate to these parents that you fully understand who their kid is. They want to see that you know that their child is an individual kid with a sense of humor and their own learning needs. And when you can communicate that to that parent, then not only do you have a relationship with that child, but now you've earned the trust and formed a relationship with that parent. And that's really important because kids spend 80% of their time at home, not at school. So if you can form that relationship with that parent, then now you have an advocate. You have somebody working for you at home, which highlights, I think, the most important truth in education, that teaching is a relationship, that if you're not learning right now, that I'm not teaching, I'm just talking, right? So we have to be in relationship for that transaction to actually occur. So then I think we have to ask the question, how do we build relationships better and therefore have better learning transactions? What can we do to be better at that? And one way is to have more of those conversations with parents to build those relationships and more of those conversations with kids. Another way is to have those conversations and record them. And so when we record those conversations, then now we can share them. Now we can amplify that message to reach more people. And I asked my students, well, what would you guys want to talk about? And they said, well, and they gave me a lot of ideas. And then I used my adult filter to decide what were actually good topics to record. And we talked about our, our classroom assignments. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Why? Are you stressed? If so, why? And what do you do to manage that stress? Are video games destroying the young minds of America? You don't think so? Let's talk about it. Let's, let's have a discussion around that. So when we have those conversations, it's really important that we find a place of vulnerability because that's what people want to listen to. That's what people want to see. Um, that talk is cheap unless you somehow make it spicy and vulnerable. But if you can find great convers if you can find great topics, and, and have those topics in this kind of vulnerable way, then people want to share them. Then now they're going to pay dividends. Um, now parents are going to want to send those conversations to each other and say, did you hear what Mr. Smith said about stress related to CMAS testing? So now not only are we having the conversation, but now we can amplify it in a way that prompts parents to have the conversations that we want them to have at home. So it's like we're multiplying ourselves, like cloning ourselves all over the place. Um, so uh, I realized that by amplifying this and creating that prompt, now I just needed to find a flow. I needed to make it work for me because a lot of teachers out there are thinking, yeah, but how's this really going to work? So the why is really strong. Okay, we, we're building relationships, and by having more trust in relationships, then now we have more learning than we had before. But do I have to stay after school for this? Asked every teacher, and my answer is no. Um, so my flow works like this, where I have conversations with my students. They volunteer if they want to be on the podcast. We record those conversations at school. I upload them to Google Drive and take up a lot of space on Google Drive. Um, I share those conversations in a really simple email out to all my parents every week uh, using Schedule Send. I never send emails actually on Sunday. 
Sunday. Um, and then I bask in the reality that I know that parents are listening to that conversation on the way to school with their kid and turning and saying, how are you doing with your five paragraph essay, Johnny? So here's that same QR code as before. If you're wondering how all this stuff works, um, I show you how our district computer has everything that you already need to get started. Thank you so much.